Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so um, this is a very fun video because we're going to prove the binomial theorem using mathematical induction. And um, if you're not at all familiar with mathematical induction, then you're going to find this video overwhelming because there's a lot going on on top of the inductive proof. So um, I would suggest that you teach yourself induction first. Um, I have many videos on uh, induction, so check them out. Um, all right. Otherwise, this is uh, the theorem we're trying to prove, which in some quarters is called the binomial expansion formula. But whatever you choose to call it, what we want to show is that the left-hand side here is equal to the right-hand side. And we're going to do it using induction. Yeah? Okay, cool. So, uh, I'm going to skip the uh, basic cases of induction and just jump to the inductive step. And as usual, in the inductive step, we're going to assume the given statement is true. That is, this here is true. So we let n equal k, and that only mean that the binomial x plus y to the power k is equal to this right-hand side. And so that's just saying that this equation is true, right? Okay, cool. And in the final step, right, where we let n equal k plus 1, uh, we want to show, or need to show rather, we need to show that the binomial x plus y to the power k plus 1 is equal to this right-hand side, which is basically this right-hand side where n is replaced with k plus 1, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So uh, our destination is this. This is where we want to get to in the final step of our inductive proof. Right now, we're on the inductive step where n is equal to k. So let's get on with it and go to the next and final step in our inductive proof. And like I said, I've skipped the basic cases where n is equal to 1 and 2 and blah, blah, blah. All right, so in the final step where n is equal to k plus 1, again, what we need to show is that this is true at the top right corner here. Yeah, but we have to start with, well, the left-hand side, which is x plus y to the power k plus 1. Now, first we see that x plus y to the power k plus 1 is the same as x plus y times x plus y to the power k. And... um. That way, we can involve the inductive step by replacing this here with what we know it is equal to in the inductive step, which is this right-hand side. And remember, in the final step of any inductive proof, you want to make use of the inductive step. So you want to use this in your final step. And wh where we're going to be able to use this here is by replacing this here uh, with the sigma expression that it's equal to, yeah? Okay, so doing that, we could say that x plus y to the power k plus 1 is equal to this here. And now we see that this sigma expression is multiplying both x and y. So applying the distributive property, we can write the following instead. Um, yeah, and all I did is distribute this sigma expression to x and then to y, right? And so I've got my x there multiplying the sigma expression plus my y there multiplying the sigma expression. Now what I want to do is put this x inside of sigma and put this y inside of the second sigma. So I should say put this x in the first sigma and then put this y in the second sigma. And the impact will be this. When we put this x in the first sigma here, this uh, here will be multiplied, this x to the power k minus r will be multiplied by this x inside. And so this here will change to x to the power k plus 1 minus r, right? Um, okay. And then um, when we throw this y in inside of the second sigma, this y to the r will be multiplied by a y, so it will change to y to the r plus 1 power. All right, all right. So um, that's the impact, um, but otherwise we need space. So um, let's make space and remind ourselves that we are in the final step of our inductive proof, so uh, where we've let n equal k plus 1, and this is where we left off. Um, and I said what the impact of uh, putting the x and the y inside of the first and second sigma respectively will do. And that's this. Now, because I don't want to keep calling them first sigma and second sigma, I've called first sigma A and then I've called second sigma B. So here, A and B are just names. So don't be confused. They're not anything new like that we need to worry about. They're just names for the first sigma and the second sigma. All right. And as I said, the first sigma or A has changed so that uh, the power on x is, is uh, k plus 1 minus r as opposed to just k minus r. And then b, or second sigma, has 
a power of r plus one on y instead of just r um before we threw this y in right okay 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 you get it you get it you get it now um ultimately what we need to get to is turn these two sigmas into this one sigma here right that's what we need and so if we look carefully at this one sigma here we're happy with a because the power on x and y are identical to where we need to get to x has a power k plus one minus r and y has a power r but b is kind of a mess so we need to work on b um and so let's work on b and doing that will mean um, that we make this following substitution on B so that we can get it to look like what we want it to look like. So in B here, if we make the substitution that S be equal to R plus 1, first note that saying S is equal to R plus 1 means R is equal to S minus 1. Um, but yeah, the impact of this substitution on B is pretty clear. Since S is equal to R plus 1, instead of R equals 0, we'll go to R equals 0 plus 1, or Sorry, instead of r equals 0, we'll go to s equals, because what we want to do is change this second sigma with b, um, where we replace the r's with expressions of s, norm, uh, specifically uh, with r equaling s minus 1, since s is equal to r plus 1. So basically, this second sigma b is going to be about s for a second. Um, all right, for a little bit, I should say. Okay, anyway, anyway, uh, this r equals 0 is going to turn into s equals 0 plus 1 um, because s is equal to r plus 1 and so that's going to be s equals 1 uh, instead of r equals 0 and then this k here is for r it's r equals k right now um, but that'll mean s equals r which is k plus 1 so up top here we're going to have a, a k plus 1 so it's going to be s equals 1 to k plus 1 and then here this r is going to change into s minus 1 because this substitution We'll have r equaling s minus 1. And then similarly, this r here will change to s minus 1. Uh, and this other r here will change into s minus 1. So the r's, the three r's will change into s minus 1. And here, the indices on sigma are going to change into s equals 1 and then uh, k plus 1 at the top. Yeah, okay, showing all of this will mean that we display the following, right? So uh, b will change into this. And now we can simplify a little bit here. On uh, the exponent of x, we have k minus the quantity s minus 1. But that's just k plus 1 minus s. That's nice. And then the power on y is s minus 1 plus 1. That's just a power of s, right? Minus 1 plus 1 cancel. All right. So showing that, uh, we have this here, right? And now if I uh, so chose uh, in here, I could change uh, all the s's to an a. That's just a name change. Uh, I can change the name S to A, and this sigma would have the same value, right? If I changed this S, this S, um, this S, and this S to an A instead of an S. Well, if I can change it to an A, why not change it to an R? Um, that's what would suit us really well here. So we change all the S's here to R, and that's just a name change. And that'll mean that um, the uh, second sigma or B uh, could be written like this now and this we're happy with because now we've changed the seg second sigma b so that the exponent on x and y match our destination where we're trying to get to uh, the exponent now uh, for the sigma b uh, on x is k plus 1 minus r which is the same as what we have here and then on y we have r nice 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 so that means that now finally we can write a plus b the two sigmas like the following and since i need to make space i need to uh erase a lot of stuff um and so let's keep um this here where we left off up top and that again we got to by um you know by figuring out how to manipulate this uh, second sigma and getting it to look like this but otherwise a is just as before over here right and um this b sigma is uh, now this through uh, these series of like um, um, substitutions and discussions that I just uh, had with you. Okay, hope you're listening. All right, all right. So as I said, we need to make space and wrap up our final uh, inductive step. And so we pick up uh, from here and where to from here? Well, ultimately, we need to write a single sigma. Uh, but 
we've got a couple of issues in the way. One is uh, this here is r equals zero, whereas this here is r equals one. And up top we have k equals, um, well, we just have, sorry, r equals k in this um, first sigma, and then we have r equals k plus one in the second sigma. So the two issues are changing this r equals zero to r equals one, and changing this k plus one into k. Well, we can do that by evaluating uh, the first sigma for r equals zero and setting aside that term and then writing a sigma that starts with r equals one uh, plus the um, term where we've evaluated for r equals zero. And then in the second sigma, uh, we could end with k and just evaluate and set aside the term where r is equal to k plus one, right? Uh, so basically I'm saying in the first sigma evaluate r equals zero and in the second sigma evaluate r equals k plus one and that way you'll have sigma starting and ending in the same place in both places and we just have the um, term from r equals zero in the first sigma and then the term from r equals k plus one in the second sigma like coupled outside of the two sigmas right okay so that'd mean uh, first uh, the instruction uh, written out will look like this and then um, evaluating for r equals zero and a will get us this here which simplifies very nicely to just this x to the power k plus one and then evaluating for r equals k plus one and b will have us first write this expression but it simplifies very nicely to just y to the power k plus one and so setting those two terms aside outside of the two sigmas uh, this um, from the first sigma and this from the second sigma now we have the first sigma starting and ending at r equals 1 and k, and then the second sigma also starting and ending at r equals 1 and k. And um, the exponents on uh, x and y are the same in the two sigmas, so that's nice. So basically we could just write one sigma, and all we need to do is have this um, uh, k choose r plus uh, this k choose r minus 1 multiplying uh, this expression with x and y inside of sigma. And then, of course, uh, we have sigma, as I said, going from r equals 1. So we can write 1 sigma right here, coupling the two sigmas. And it should be pretty easy to see why uh, the two sigmas coupled become this. But otherwise, the two terms um, are right here, right? Okay, okay, cool. Now, uh, we have a nice property with n choose k that will allow us to couple these two um, n choose k expressions. Um, which is that k choose r plus k choose r minus 1, it turns out, is equal to k plus 1 choose r. It's easy enough to show that this is true, but yeah, it's true. And so then that means that we can replace this here with k plus 1 choose r, which is looking more and more like where we need to get to. So we're happy. Nice, nice, nice. All right, all right. So let's do that. Ooh, wait. I skipped a step. Where? Okay, I'm getting to the final, but by circumventing this middle step. Yeah, first, let's get to this middle step. I have a slide out of order here, I guess. Yeah, okay. Oh, no. All right, so this is the slide I need to delete. My bad, y'all. Delete this slide. Okay, and I have two slides backwards. It's okay. So first, let's display the correct slide next, and that's this here. And this here is just showing that, like, We've used this property here from where we left off, which was here, and combine these two into what they equal, which is this. Otherwise, this here is the same as that, and we still have these two guys outside. And now what I'm going to claim is that like, we don't have to have these two guys outside if we change this r to start with 0, and we, we change this k to be k plus 1. Otherwise, keep everything else in sigma the same. And so therefore, basically... Uh, we can get to where we want to get to uh, by throwing these two guys inside of sigma here, is what I'm saying. These two guys don't have to be outside anymore. Uh, they can come inside because um, if we replace this here um, with the two guys outside plus the sigma expression with this sigma expression, just one sigma expression right here, which is where we need to get to, right? Um, then, then notice that when r is equal to 0 in here, we'll have... Uh, we'll have, uh, when r is equal to 0, we'll have k plus 1 choose 0, which is 1, and then x to the uh, power k plus 1 minus 0, which is x to the k plus 1, and then times y to the 0, which is 1. So we just get 
x to the power k plus 1 when r is equal to 0 in this expression. So when r is equal to 0 in this expression, we just get this guy. And, all right, and then when um, r is equal to k plus 1 in this expression, right, in this sigma expression, we get k plus 1, choose k plus 1, which is 1, and then x to the power k plus 1 minus k plus 1. So x to the power 0, which is 1. So far we have 1 times 1. And then we get y to the power k plus 1. And so we just get um, y to the power k plus 1 when this sigma here is evaluated for k plus 1, which is this other guy. So basically, um, right here, we start with r equals 1 and, r equal t and end with k, right? We start, sorry, I, the inflection on that was poor. But yeah, we start with r equals 1 and end with k. But here, we change to r equals 0 and uh, end with k plus 1. And this small change on either end basically accounts for these two guys being thrown inside of sigma and this part. Yeah? All right, all right, all right. Cool. So we're at the end uh, where we need to get to. And I'm done here. I hope you enjoyed this.